Wonderful to see you here for our worship service. Uh, tonight we will be beginning our first service in our midweek Advent series entitled Let Us Not Neglect Meeting Together. This week we're going to be taking a look at there is no such thing as a ghost hug. So the whole point of this series is to get us uh, encouraged and uh, get us understanding of what just is significant and important and unique about public worship and what happens here in uh, the worship services that we have at Emmanuel. Today we'll be following the order of service of Vespers and uh, just follow along with the screens and you shouldn't get too lost. So God's service to us begins as we ring the bell and we sing our opening hymn. All glory to the Son who comes to set us free. <clears throat> Ever one through all eternity. O Lord, open my lips and my mouth will declare your praise. Make haste, O God, to deliver me. Make haste to help me, O Lord. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning is now and will be forever. Amen. Praise to you, O Christ, King who comes to save us. O oh, come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Let us come into His presence with thanksgiving. Let us make a joyful noise to Him with songs of praise. For the Lord is a great God 
and a great king above all gods. In his hand are the depths of the earth. The heights of the mountains are his also. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hands form the dry land. O come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord our Maker, for he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Today, if you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts as at Meribah, as on the day at Massa in the wilderness, when your fathers put me to the test and put me to the proof, though they had seen my work. For forty years I loathed that generation and said, They are a people who go astray in their heart, and they have not known my ways. Therefore I swore in my wrath, they shall not enter my rest. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. As in this feast of love you bless us now. The first reading for tonight comes from Genesis, the 17th chapter. <clears throat> when Abram was 99 years old, the Lord appeared to Abram and said to him, I am God Almighty, walk before me and be blameless that I may make my covenant between me and you and may multiply you greatly. Then Abram fell on his face, and God said to him, Behold, my covenant is with you, and you shall be the father of a multitude of nations. No longer shall your name be called Abram, but your name shall be Abraham, for I have made you the father of a multitude of nations. I will make you exceedingly fruitful, and I will make you into nations, and kings shall come from you. And I will establish my covenant between me and you and your offspring after you throughout their generations for an everlasting covenant to be God to you and to your offspring after you. And I will give to you and to your offspring after you the land of your sojournings, all the land of Canaan for an everlasting possession, and I will be their God. And God said to, Ab God said to Abraham, As for you... You shall keep my covenant, you and your offspring after you throughout their generations. This is my covenant, which you shall keep between me and you and your offspring after you. Every male among you shall be circumcised. 
You shall be circumcised in the flesh of your foreskins, and it shall be a sign of the covenant between me and you. He who is eight days old among you shall be circumcised. Every male throughout your generations, whether born in your house or bought with your money, money from any foreigner, foreigner who is not of your offspring, both he who is born in your house and he who is bought with your money shall surely be circumcised. So shall my covenant be in your flesh an everlasting covenant. Any un uncircumcised male who is not circumcised in the flesh of his foreskin shall be cut off from his people. He has broken my covenant. O Lord, have mercy on us. Thanks be to God. The second reading comes from 1 Corinthians chapter 11. For I received from the Lord what I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup, and after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Whoever therefore eats the bread or drinks the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of profaning the body and blood of the Lord. Let a person examine himself then, and so eat of the bread and drink of the cup. For anyone who eats and drinks without discerning the body eats and drinks judgment on himself. That is why many of you are weak and ill, and some have died. But if we judged ourselves truly, we would not be judged. But when, but when we are judged by the Lord, we are disciplined, so that we may not condemn, be condemned along with the world. So then, my brothers, when you come together to eat, wait for one another. If anyone is hungry, let him eat at home, so that when you come together, it will not be for judgment. About the other things, I will give directions when I come. O Lord, have mercy on us. Thanks be to God. The Gospel reading for tonight comes from Matthew, the 28th chapter. Now the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. And when they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you always, to the end of the age. O Lord, have mercy on us. Thanks be to God. Behold, the days are coming, says the Lord, when I will raise up for David a righteous branch. This is the name by which he will be called. The Lord is our righteousness. In his days Judah will be saved, and Israel will dwell securely. This is the name by which he will be called. The Lord is our righteousness. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. This is the name by which he will be called. The Lord is our righteousness. In the name of Jesus, amen. You know, it's pretty common on social media that people will share when something sad happens in their life, say, you know, they burnt the ramen noodles that they were trying to make that night for supper or something, they'll share the picture of that blackened mass of noodle product. And in the face of such a travesty, 
in tragedy, a lot of times you'll see many people, good-willed people, share sympathy. Share words of, of care and concern. Like, I'm so sorry that it happened to your evening. That's a, a tough 35 cents that you'll never get back. Right? Sometimes, though, people go even above and beyond and they post a picture like this one. Right? Ghost hug. You can't feel it, but it's there. No, no, it is not. I mean, sure, the sentiment is nice and good and wonderful and all, but there is simply no such thing as a ghost hug. Because the whole purpose of a hug, the whole point, is to physically touch someone. Right? At its most basic level, that's what a hug is. It's a physical way, an emphasis on the physical, a physical way that we can show another person that we love them, that we're concerned about them, to show them our sympathy, and to let them know that we approve of them. And it turns out, we absolutely need that physical touch and that human presence and interaction. We need it, in most cases, to thrive and, and truly, I think, to survive. You know, 2020 has shown us lots of different things, but I think one of the main things that it's shown us is that isolation is very, very bad for humans. Extended isolation increases things like anger, aggression, anxiety, substance abuse, and forgetfulness. I mean, sure, life might indeed be safer when we're all by ourselves, but an isolated life is a life that barely seems alive. Of course, you know, we get to interact with, well, we get to interact with people still, right? Through digital hangouts, Zoom, Facebook rooms, right? On FaceTime and all that kind of stuff. But still, those things are just not a very good comparison. I mean, those things are like McDonald's compared to the good home-cooked meal of real-life human interaction. I mean, yeah, it's okay, but it's not great. And I mean, what happens if you eat nothing but McDonald's for an extended period of time? Right? You ever seen Super Size Me? Yeah. It's, it's not good what that can do to you. There's something vital missing there. After all, my kids can't climb on, my, on their grandparents' laps through an iPad screen. In his book, The Revenge of Analog, uh, author David Sachs writes about the evolution of gaming. He talks about how gaming went from board games, where interacting with another human was absolutely essential, to video games that you played in the same room, on the same TV, to now we have video games that, instead of being played in the same room, on the same TV, are played by individuals on their computers, online, with lots of different people. And one of the things that he notes is that even though people might be playing with other human beings from all across the world, once that session, that game is over, these feelings of isolation and loneliness hit those gamers like a wave. So it turns out that physical, flesh and blood, human component of interaction is very, very important. We need it. And the thing is, hugs actually turns out are, have lots and lots of health benefits. Science proves this. There's been scientific studies that show that a, a person who gets hugs, well what a hug does is it lowers stress, it uh, lowers blood pressure and anxiety, and when a person gets a hug your brain actually releases all sorts of chemicals that bring on feelings of contentment and pleasure. So, 
If you're sitting next to someone and it's actually appropriate, give them a hug right now and know that you're doing something good for them right now. That actually it makes people feel better just generally to get a hug. We need that physical touch and interaction for our well-being. And we got to note that that hug and those, those benefits only happen when the hug's actually there. So it turns out a ghost hug is no hug at all. We need that physical touch and interaction for our well-being. And the thing is, God knows that you need this. After all, he made you. Think back to Genesis chapter 2, how it describes how God made man. It says, The Lord God formed man out of the dust from the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. Dust and breath. There are two components to a human being. A body and a spirit. Our physical bodies are an integral and important part of what it means to be who we are. And it's so important that what happens to our body actually affects what happens to our spirit, whether good or bad. And we know this instinctually, right? Intuitively. After all, what happens to your spirit if you're really sick for a long time? What happens to your spirit if, say, instance, you have like really bad kidney stones? You're a really happy person, aren't you? And want to be around everybody. Not quite, right? And the thing is, God designed us to be like that. And that design is a wonderful, good thing. And it's why God has given us the sacraments. And he's commanded us to make use of those things. Right? Through the word of God, you get to hear that God loves you. Right? God says, I love you. You are my child. I have forgiven you in my son, Jesus Christ, and you are mine forever. The sacraments come alongside of the word of God and reinforce that message in a physical way. It's the same way if someone says, I love you, and they follow it up with a hug. As the water gets poured on your head, as you eat the bread and you taste the wine, God is giving you a hug. In the word, the word in the sacrament touches not just your spirit, but touches your body as well. God touches your entire being. It touches you to the core of who you are. And this makes sense that God would do it this way. Right? Because Jesus became human in every way that we are. Body and soul. And he did that not just to save our souls after death, but also to give us everlasting life in our bodies. In these bodies at the resurrection of the dead. With the sacraments. In a very physical way, God is saying to you, I love you. I care about what you're going through and it will be okay because I'm here for you. And just like a real hug, there's no such thing as a ghost sacrament. Sacraments only happen in real life. Sacraments only happen specifically most of the time in the divine service, in the public worship service of the congregation of God. And when we avoid public worship for any reason, whether that's a good reason or a bad reason, we are robbing ourselves of some incredible benefits. Now we already talked about the benefits of hugging, but the benefits of the sacraments are way better. And I want to review those with you right now. So your hymnals in front of you, I know we haven't used those in a long time. Turn to page 325. That's the small catechism section of our hymnal. And we're going to take a look at the benefits that come to us in these sacraments. So on page 325, on the left-hand column at the bottom where it says second, we're going to read that. I'll ask you the question. I want us to read the answer together. 
What benefits does baptism give? It works forgiveness of sins, rescues from death and the devil, and gives eternal salvation to all who believe this as the words and promises of God declare. Now flip to page 327. And at the very top of the left-hand column, we hear about the benefits that come to us from the sacrament of the altar. We'll do the same thing. What is the benefit of this eating and drinking? These words given and shed for you for the forgiveness of sins show us that in the sacrament, forgiveness of sins, life, and salvation are given us through these words. For where there is forgiveness of sins, there is also life and salvation. These are the benefits that come to you. So a hug can give you contentment and increase pleasure and lower anxiety. But the sacraments can give you everlasting peace, everlasting contentment. And can give you the assurance that even amidst your anxiety, that God is there with you and it's going to be okay. And those benefits are everlasting. So, brothers and sisters, let's not neglect to meet together in public worship, in the divine service, because this is where the sacraments get handed out. And if your 2020 has been anywhere close to my 2020, it means that you could probably use a hug right about now. You need something to boost you up. You need someone to tell you that it's going to be okay. So many of us are stressed to the max. We got fear up to our eyeballs about what's going to happen to us, our communities, and our country into the future. So if that's you, come get a hug from your Heavenly Father. Come and get the sacrament. Come and feel your Father's concern and love for you, his beloved child. That's the gift that he offers here at this table. And now I'll stop talking to you because I'm pretty well just speaking to the choir at this point. I'll just speak to the people who will be joining us on YouTube. If you still don't feel comfortable about coming and receiving the sacrament for fear of the coronavirus, Praise God that we still have online worship because at least that's better than nothing. But it's, you know, nothing still ain't all that great. But if you would like the sacrament, then please get a hold of me. Call me. And I will do my level best to make sure that the sacrament gets to you, whether it's at your house or in my office or whatever. Because hugs are very important. And there is no such thing as a ghost hug. Amen. We rise as we sing the canticle. And the lifting up of my hands as the evening sacrifice. My soul now magnifies the Lord. My spirit leaps for joy in him. He keeps me in his kind regard. And I am blessed for time to come. For he alone who shows such might has done amazing things to me. His mercy flows, His name like light, remains in time perpetually. His 
arm is strong, his strength is great. He scatters those of proud intent and casts them down from high estate. Then gives the low his nourishment. He feeds the hungry as his own. The wealthy leave with empty hands. He gives his help to Israel. His glorious promise always stands. Mercy, Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. O Lord, hear my prayer, and let my cry come to you. Stir up your power, O Lord, and come, that by your protection we may be rescued from the threatening perils of our sins and saved by your mighty deliverance. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. O Father of mercies and God of all comfort, our only help in time of need, Look with favor, favor upon your servants, Eunice Peepenbrink, Nathan Rader, and Butch Cruiser. Assure them of your mercy, deliver them from the temptations of the evil one, and give them patience and comfort in their distresses. If it please you, Lord, restore them to health, or give them grace to accept this tribulation with courage and hope. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O God, from whom come all holy desires, all good counsels, and all just works, give to us, your servants, that peace which the world cannot give, that our hearts may be set to obey your commandments, and also that we, being defended from the fear of our enemies, may live in peace and quietness. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with us all. Amen.